So, uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I think uh, it's a minute past two uh, East African time, and I'm starting the the event right away. Uh, by way of introduction, uh, this event has been organized by uh, organized by plant wise plus program which is a division within kabi and plant wise program is aimed at responding to the needs of farmers and the systems that support them uh, plant wise plant wise plus helps countries to predict prevent and prepare for plant health threats and reduce crop losses so it's it's a very important division within Kabi, and Kabi, uh, for that matter, uh, is also in 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 uh, full is is Center for Agriculture and Bioscience International, uh, which is a non-profit intergovernmental development and information organization focusing primarily on agricultural and environmental issues in the developing world and the creation, curation, and dissemination of scientific knowledge. So uh, PlantWise has organized this event, and the event is focusing on food safety in Kenya, safeguarding consumers' interests and the role of different actors in the agri-food uh, system. Now, fresh fruits and vegetables are among the most consumed commodities in Kenya. However, pests and diseases consistently threaten productivity in the horticultural sector, and this has necessitated use of pesticides to protect crops from in uh, insect pests and diseases. Now, these pesticides, if not used judiciously or appropriately at times, pose great risks to food safety, affecting the health of humans and the environment. Today, Kabian partners seek to generate a conversation on mitigation, uh, mitigating pesticide risks in the fresh fruits and vegetables in Kenya, proposing potential solutions for policy, industry, producers, and other value chain actors. Now, to help us kick off the discussions, we have three panelists. We have uh, Susan Muniri Ocheng. Uh, Susan Muniri Ocheng is Chief Manager Certification and Inspection, uh, Kenya Accreditation Services. So Susan is currently the Chief Manager and a member of the KS 1758 Standard Implementation Committee. She's a qualified evaluator and accreditation systems in Africa, focusing on mutual recognition of conformity assessment on the continent. Susan has 24 years experience in quality compliance, risk management, and conformity assessment systems. The other panelist is Mr. Severino King Manene. Manene is a Kenyan national and uh, holds Masters of Science in Agricultural and Rural Development. Uh, currently, he's due to, he heads Horticultural Division, Directorate of Crop Resource, State Department for Agriculture, Minister of Agriculture, and livestock development. Then uh, we have Dr. Samuel Were. Were currently is a lecturer at Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology. Uh, he's a crop protectionist and agronomist with more than 20 years of experience in agricultural production systems, training, and auditing agricultural 
agro production systems. He supported private sector uh, and agricultural communities in designing, implementing, and management of their production systems, business planning, and development of quality management systems. So the three will help us to have a discussion on our topic of today, which is uh, uh, food safety in Kenya, uh, and focusing on safeguarding consumers' interests and the role of uh, different actors in the agri food uh, system. Now, a few housekeeping rules. Number one, I'll request all the people in attendance to mute their phones or have them on silent mode so that we don't have the phones ringing and causing distraction. Uh, number two, if you look at the screen itself, we have a question and answer a slot. So if you have a question to any of the panelists, after they have given their presentations, then you can put your question in the Q&A. It can either be general to all the three panelists, or you can assign, assign it to a specific panelist uh, for that. We also will allow during question uh, Q and answer time, the plenary session, a few people to raise their hands and probably give comments or ask questions to the panelists. Uh, but we prefer uh, people putting qu questions in Q and A uh, section. We also have a chat uh, box and you can type um, your comments uh, in the chat box. So that is the way we are going to handle uh, this session this afternoon. And I will start by giving the panelists uh, uh, time to give their reflections on the subject uh, itself. And the panelists will have under 10 minutes to do so. So I will request you to really uh, keep time so that we, we have enough time for all of us, including those people in attendance who will be in the plenary session. Uh, so I will start by giving Susan Muniri Ochien to tell us what she thinks about food safety in Kenya. Uh, does she think uh, the consumer's interests are really safeguarded? And probably what is her role as a leading person in the, uh, in the industry? Thank you very much. Um... So as you've been told, I'm Susanna Munyiri Ocheng. I'm the Chief Manager Certification and Inspection at Kenas. I will try as much as possible to, within the short time that's been provided to bring in the role of accreditation on matters uh, of food safety. And as I start off with my presentation, I just want to start off with uh, a joint statement uh, that was uh, issued um, in the year 2019 um, and we published it in the International Laboratory Accreditation uh, Forum newsletter uh, with respect to concerns on, on matters of uh, uh, foodborne diseases, food concerns. Published by the Food and Agriculture Organization, World Health Organization, as well as uh, the World Trade Organization. And it did state that foodborne diseases have a significant impact on public health. Uh, food security, productivity, and poverty. And what concerned me most was it actually did state that nearly 600 million people fall sick and 420 die prematurely each year due to uh, foodborne diseases. And 30% of foodborne deaths occur among children under five years of age. Now, listen to this that 33 million lives are lost due to eating unsafe food. Now, these are global uh, details. Uh, maybe the Kenyan ones, uh, as the regulator comes on board, he can share with us what the situation in Kenya is. But what are the concerns that uh, that that you and I face? Uh, one of them is asking ourselves, is the food that we consume safe? Yeah, is it free of toxins? Is it free of contaminants or pollutants? Is it free of pathogens? And then is it authentic? 
that is, are we consuming more what we think we are, or are we consuming something else? Where it is packaged and labeled, are the label declarations true? And then how is it produced? Uh, are there matters of environmental sustainability taken into account? Uh, is the health, safety, and welfare of the workers on the farms or within the production uh, and value stream uh, taken into consideration? And then when we are talking about quality, do we have an unbroken chain of assurance? So can we all attest that whatever we get from our markets or our retail outlets is, is, is fit for use? And so we all know that access to safe and nutritious food is an essential requirement for maintaining health and well-being. Uh, it's interesting that in the Kenyan constitution, we have Article 43, which talks about uh, Kenyans or citizens being, uh, you know, having economic and social rights, and one of them pointing to the highest attainable standard of health, and then you need to have uh, food that is of acceptable quality. Now, when you use the word adjective as acceptable, sometimes it, it is relative. But it goes further to provide for consumer rights in Article 46, which requires that the goods and services sold within the uh, territory are of reasonable quality and that uh, uh, we have to protect the health, safety, and economic interests of consumers. And it even provides for a compensatory uh, a requirement there that in case there's injury arising or loss arising from consuming defective product, uh, then the persons are subject to compensation. And so it is important that the market has an assurance of what it consumes. Um, you and I being part of that market. Now, conformity assessments, you know, now this is the area that we dwell in. Uh, do demonstrate to a certain level of comfort the fulfillment of specified requirements or claims. And these specified requirements or claims could be in standards or, or in regulations. And so conformity assessments can be applied to a product, service, process, system, a body of persons, and it includes inspection, testing, and certification. And you may ask, so what is conformity assessment? Now, when you have uh, a, a standard that provides for uh, certain requirements for which, say, a food product uh, or produce uh, is supposed to, to meet, uh, you either do an inspection activity that then informs whether it meets those requirements, or you test uh, the produce or product, or you certify the product itself or the process within which that product is, is produced. Now, testing, inspection, and certification is what we refer to as conformity assessment activities. And that is where Kenya Accreditation uh, Service or any other accreditation body in the world plays in. We actually do what you call a third-party attestation of the conformity assessment activities. That means testing, inspection, or certification to be able to inform of uh, that they, they are competent enough to produce credible outcomes, so either a test result or an inspection certificate or a, or a certificate of, of, of product or process. And we do this because the market requires a performing product. The purchaser would not want to, you know, purchase product, which then eventually they'll have to recall and turn back to the producer. And of course, then we have a regulator who, who is a, a you know, charged with ensuring that what is consumed within the, 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 the market is, is, is safe. And of course, we have trade organizations and authority who want to facilitate trade. And so where you have a test report, a test certificate, or an inspection certificate that you are able to move across borders or across territories without necessarily having that produce or product being tested, tested, or inspected. So that is in that sense the accreditation framework. Now, we cannot talk about accreditation without bringing in the quality infra infrastructure elements because they, these quality infrastructure elements are what we refer to as public goods. Part of it is what you refer to as a public good within an economy. So in an economy, you will have a regulator. In our case, when it comes to agri-produce, we have the Ministry of Agriculture and uh, the associated agencies in it playing their role as, as regulators uh, within the, the horticulture space. And they actually do drive policy, they drive direction. And then we have, and, 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 and the, the regulations that they actually then provide in case uh, enable us to be able to conform, to provide for conformity, to, to uh, demonstrate conformity um, to the specified requirements. 
And then we have a standardization body, uh, a national standardization body. We have a national metrology institute. I will talk about this in the next slide. Then you have an accreditation body. But then you have the conformity assessment space, which usually and ordinarily would be a competitive area that any person, whether it's a public or private sector or an governmental organization, would play in that space. And, and that is the, those are the activities that are actually subject to accreditation. So just running through this chart a little quickly so that I'm able to go into the, the detail here. We say the regulator meets the public policy. They actually then uh, come up with the regulations uh, which are provide for what uh, the economy subscribes to and what the players or the uh, actors within the value chain have to uh, demonstrate. Uh, in terms of uh, compliance. Then we have a measuring, a measurement, uh, a National Metrology Institute, which deals with the physical standards. So standards for, for, for say, for weight, uh, standards for temperature, standards for, 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 for moisture, the physical standards that would actually demonstrate uh, that a certain measuring instrument is actually delivering as expected. And, and mo most of the economies will have a National Metrology Institute or it will be embedded within the National Standards Organization. Then you have a national uh, standards body which has a normative standard, and then of course now the claims of conformity where uh, the testing, inspection, and certification happens, and then of course the accreditation body and market surveillance is done by the regulator, so to speak. Now, uh, while Kenas does uh, assess conformity assessment activities, and that is testing, inspection, and certification, uh, Kenas is also assessed regionally and internationally uh, by the International Laboratory Accreditation Corporation and International Accreditation Framework. So, what 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 do we do here? We actually do evaluate the testing laboratories that will carry out a range of of tests. So, it will be either chemical tests, microbiological tests that will inform food safety issues such as you know, residue levels or toxins or all that. We'll, the testing laboratories will also carry out tests that form, inform conditions of growth of, of product, uh, which will help in informing on whether to nutrify or other intervention mechanisms. And then we also have uh, calibration laboratories. But we also then, on the other hand, have certification bodies, which we accredit to various standards. And what the certification bodies do is that they carry out audits of food production and handling throughout the supply chain. So from the farm to the retail, and you may find that they may issue certification bonds. And those bodies can either be accredited under the certification standard or the management system standard. Uh, and in Kenya, we have a number of those that are in place. And then you have inspection bodies who carry out farm inspections, hygiene inspections, storage, warehouse inspection, or pre-shipment for that matter. Uh, regulators play a lot in this space, but uh, they are also do subject to, to, to accreditation. And so in essence, what we are saying is when it comes to matters of uh, plant health protection products, it is good that the farmers are educated to understand first what the product is and what it's supposed to do and when to use it because it is usually would be a last resort to use. And where they apply plant protection products, then of course apply, uh, use it in accordance to good agricultural practices. And where used, they need to ensure that it is authorized by the regulator, it is applied correctly, and retention times prior to harvest are observed. Now, testing of produce is done, should be done in an accredited lab to determine whether we have any residue, uh, residuals of, of, of the product that has used or a metabolite of that product, so to speak. And so it is encouraged that an accredited lab is used to, because the accredited lab, when you do accreditation, you confirm that the methods are validated, the methods are appropriate, to actually be specific enough to pick uh, the, the 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 active ingredient, uh, so to speak, that we may offer, and then of course we do not just rely on test or inspection, but we also look at certification of the production process to ensure that we actually check all the way from inputs, the uh, seed that is used to be, to be certified, the soil, the water that is used for irrigation purposes, so to speak, the actual production process, transportation, distribution, and even the handling at the retail. That, that's the entire certification process. So in essence, that's what you're saying. And uh, while we are talking about testing inspection activities, they are essential. It is important that they are accredited. And we believe that accreditation plays a right on them to, to ensure that our food is safe and we must have a quality. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, thank you, Susan, so, so much for 
that very informative presentation, uh, uh, you really raised a lot of exciting issues. And I think the people in attendance are, are benefited from your presentation. And if anybody has a question, then we will come to that at the appropriate time. Uh, for those in attendance, we have the Q&A. So if you've got a question for any of the panelists, please uh, put your question in the Q&A, and then we will read it out during the plenary session. Uh, we also have a chat, so you can also go to the chat and leave whatever comment you want to have. And for those who joined a, a little late, my name is Ochiengo Godo. I'm your moderator. I'm a science journalist, and I'll be the one uh, taking you through the session. Yes, uh, I will now invite Mr. Severino Manene, uh, who will give us his insights. Uh, Mr. Severino Manene is currently the head horticulture division, uh, division directorate of crop resource, state department of agriculture, minister of agriculture and livestock development in Kenya. So, Mr. Manene, you play, you play a very important role. What are your reflections on the state of food safety in Kenya uh, viewed from the pesticides use? Uh, are, are our people really safe? Are their interests taken care of? And, and what are you doing to ensure that their interests are taken off? Uh, so the floor is yours, uh, Mr. Severino Manene. Uh, if probably you have a problem with your connectivity, then I will move to the third panelist, and then I will come back to you after that. So I will uh, give the chance to Dr. Samuel Were, who is a lecturer at Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology, and is a crop protectionist and agronomist with more than 20 years of experience in agricultural production system. Mr. Were, you are coming from the academia. What do you think the academia should do in respect to the topic that we are talking about today, which is safe, uh, safeguarding consumers' interest when it comes to pesticides use uh, in the horticultural sector? The floor is yours. Right. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Cheng. Uh, there is a uh, well, good uh, Susan has uh, captured quite uh, a number of uh, pertinent uh, aspects uh, regarding to uh, food uh, safety and uh, more particularly for this particular uh, segment of webinar we are looking at uh, rather we are focusing on uh, horticultural produce that is fruits and uh, vegetables. Um, I must say they're important, just coming to ask uh, to answer your question on the use of uh, pesticides. Uh, fruits and vegetables are very important, uh, and uh, they're normally an, uh, uh, very important in consumption and contribute to a number of uh, aspects. And when not consumed, we find uh, we have quite a number of uh, illnesses coming into uh, or rather happening. But in Kenya, you'll find consumers um, co rather consume more of the vegetables, uh, could be due to challenges of financial challenges, but fruits are also uh, consumed and in high proportions. And when we are looking at food safety, uh, just to put it in context, because you've spoken more of the uh, pesticides, uh, but when you're looking at food safety, we're looking at various aspects or components. One of them being uh, pesticides, and uh, we, whereby pesticides will fall under the chemical uh, contaminants, which are resulting to food safety uh, aspects. But then uh, we have other contaminants, which are uh, leading to grave uh, problems, which we have the microbial contaminants. The microbial contaminants, which end up resulting into food Born uh, diseases, which are normally passed through uh, fruits and vegetables. And more important is because quite a number of these fruits are eaten raw. Some of the fruits are uh, consumed even with the ring without peeling because that's how they are. 
and others will be peeled. But then what are the hygienic conditions that these particular pesticides are uh, being uh, consumed? That becomes uh, the problem. And you'll find that the burden uh, through uh, fresh produce is particularly high in many uh, countries. And uh, more or less in the developed uh, countries where we have uh, food safety systems that have not been well uh, developed. Uh, we have other physical contaminants which are not a uh, great uh, concern as of now, though they are a problem. And when you're looking at uh, physical contaminants, we look at things like rocks, uh, metals, other physical aspects, which you can be able to see with our naked eyes as compared to uh, these other contaminants. And um, the health burden is really increased. And in Kenya, you'll find foodborne uh, diseases cause more deaths and illnesses uh, from various studies that have shown they cause more illnesses than uh, tuberculosis and uh, even uh, cause illnesses nearly as much as uh, uh, cancer does. And uh, you'll find the per capita uh, of uh, these diseases in Africa uh, suffers higher from this, uh, which was a study by World Health Organization in 2015, showing that actually there is a problem. Chemical contamination has also remained to be a problem, uh, more so with uh, looking with a case study of Kenya, chemical contaminants have continued to be more of a problem in local produce than in export uh, produce. You'll find that uh, in local produce, chemical contaminants have continued to be a problem because uh, me, me, most of the produce that is brought into the market is not subjected to the good agricultural practices that we subject other produce that is designed for export to these uh, challenges. Reason being, uh, the other produce is actually checked. We grow it under good agricultural uh, uh, practices and end up having a safe product. By uh, default, we may have that produce that was destined for the export market getting into our markets. This is safe. But produce that is actually destined for our markets is what we really have a great uh, concern. As much as we are talking about uh, chemical, uh, having uh, contaminants being a problem, you'll find that uh, these chemical contaminants, and when you're talking about chemical contaminants, we are including pesticides that have been applied on the uh, crop, or we can use the plant protection products, products that are applied to be able to control uh, diseases and pests in crops and increase uh, productivity. There are quite a number, but you'll find this contribute only to around 2% of food safety concerns. But the greater percentage will be by the microorganisms or pathogens, which will be an important aspect that we need also to uh, be able to look at. Uh, we cannot negate the fact that we always uh, rely on uh, plant protection products as much as we undertake other methods, but what plant protection products are we utilizing? Yes, Mr. they must. Dr. Were, you, you have a minute and a half to go. Wow, right. that's interesting. Yes, we have uh, plant protection products uh, that have been uh, approved or have been uh, registered by your PPP, but no. then what do we need to do? Uh, we need to be able to uh, have proper and clear records, have plant protection products that are required for use in these particular crops, and we have a proper monitoring effect. How does the uh, academia and research come into play? Academia and research come into play in capacity building, because this aspect of uh, food safety is a multi-sectoral uh, it needs a multi-sectoral approach. Uh, our colleague uh, and my colleague Susan has been able to talk about what accreditation does. Uh, Severino will speak about what the government uh, plays about. But then academia needs to capacity build, training, undertake research. Like, for example, we have various uh, researches that have been done 
analysis tests that indicate the products that are being sold in our market have quite high pesticide residue. But this information is not out in the domain. Now, research, uh, researchers and uh, academia need to come up with these types of research and be able to bring about where is the burden and which crops have a problem with these uh, uh, plant protection products and how do they impact our lives. Not only our lives, since we are talking about food safety, they will impact our lives, they will impact also on productivity, labor, how people are uh, working. And it is important for us to be able to look at successes in this. We have been able to see a reduction even in uh, uh, contamination in produce going out. Therefore, we need to replicate that in uh, our country. We need also to come together and provide uh, also together with the regulatory framework and uh, do studies that can be able to impact and bring uh, this knowledge uh, to the population. And no, uh, can we have uh, your closing statement? <laughs> consumers uh, through the certification and early warning, uh, warning situations. I think I'll stop at that so that we can uh, give others a chance and we'll uh, continue discussion. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Sawere. That was really great. Uh, you captured various points. I'm not going to go back to them. Uh, attendees have heard them. And if they have got any questions or probably comments, then they will find them at the right time. Uh, Mr. Severino, are you available now? Are yes, you I'm able to... I'm right. able to join you now. Yes. And it's only for the inconveniences, inconveniences which were there. Now, I, I I just wanted to make a, a brief introduction in terms of what the uh, issues pertain to horticulture. Let me say that the horticulture is one of the uh, one of the subsectors of uh, the, the, the land and agriculture sector, and the horticulture pro, uh, uh, contributes approximately that four percent of the total GDP, which is contributed by agriculture sector. And the horticulture, horticulture, uh, basically the contribution from horticulture sector. Uh, it is uh, as per the last, uh, the last data which was uh, very detailed, it contributed approximately 160 billion, that is around the year 2022, 60 billion of the uh, total export from, from Kenya. And that, uh, as of now, the domestic value. As of, as of 20, two, two years ago, 2020, 2020, the domestic value of horticulture uh, products, which are actually exported, was uh, to the, uh, the tune of around 300 billion. That means that is a, a subsector which cannot really be under under the tent. So there are various there are various uh, advantages or benefits which are actually derived from horticulture as a subsector, uh, mainly foreign exchange, uh, food. Uh, in urban, in urban centers, employment is the, the rural population. Uh, there are various, uh, I mean, uh, there are other, others, as much more, maybe SMEs which are rely much on agriculture, the food, uh, like the food, that is fruit canning, the processing, and all that. So I, I think uh, I'm just giving this, inform, uh, this, this kind of data just to show the importance of this subsector. Uh, uh, the other, uh, other than uh, maybe the exports, the, the exports which are uh, already sent contributed to approximately 160 billion Kenya shillings, uh, this is a sector which actually uh, cannot be underrated. Now, uh, the main uh, the main horticultural products which are, are consumed in Kenya is basically fruit and vegetables, both for local consumption and even exports. Nevertheless, you find that there, there are challenges, there are challenges uh, which threaten, this is a very, very important sub subsector, uh, which have already said the total value uh, is approaching 300 billion and maybe uh, contribute a lot to, uh, to, to the exports. And one of the main challenges that we experience uh, as a country is the issue of the question and diseases, which consistently threaten the productivity of this particular sector. Uh, the government, uh, in, uh, the government, uh, through the Ministry of Agriculture and also other associated uh, uh, agencies in the, in the Ministry of Agriculture, has uh, some sort of mechanism or some uh, uh, some efforts or uh, uh, interventions which which the government has put in place to ensure that they are able to bring this uh, 
this threat to a minimum. And uh, uh, one of them, one of them is actually management of uh, those areas which threaten the, 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 the sector, uh, mainly control of management of pests and diseases. And, and that there are bondage within the agriculture sector, which actually spearheads these initiatives. One of them is pest control product bond, which actually, which basically regulates, which regulates the issue of, uh, of uh, the product, which control and manage uh, these uh, this, uh, uh, pests. Then we have other bodies like uh, agricultural crops environment directorates, that is uh, directed of AFA, which also does uh, regulate the, for example, the product, uh, the productive uh, uh, processes. Uh, we also have uh, bodies like uh, uh, KEFIS, that is Kenya Plant Herald Inspector of Services, which also uh, is able to regulate product, uh, particular the, 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 the the, the inputs that is the scenes and the maybe uh, the, the, the scenes and the maybe scenes the pro, uh, the, pro, uh, the input which actually get to the system because that is an, one way of also ensuring that the, uh, maybe pest resistant uh, products uh, do not find its way uh, the, 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 you know a product which are either infected and do not find the way to the country and even the pro, uh, the scenes or even scenes which are uh, used by the pro, uh, by the producer that is farmers, they also have high quality. That means they also minimize they have the effect of minimizing uh, the effect of these diseases. Now, those institutions, that is uh, the, the, the the institutions under the Ministry of Agriculture, uh, uh, they work in collaboration with those also with the private sector to ensure that a uh, a food a food or a agricultural pro, uh, product which comes out of, uh, from the producers are of high quality, and also to ensure that uh, what is actually exported also is able to, con uh, to conform to the inter international maybe, or market standards. And I, th I, I just want to say that uh, uh, in doing all that, uh, there are various efforts, efforts which, are actually, which are actually employed. Uh, one of them, especially when it comes to control of the diseases, I remember also we are in uh, in Kenya, we are in the tropics. Mr. Manene, you have less than a minute, please. So, uh, so uh, what I'm saying, uh, I'm saying that the, uh, the various government agencies, in collaboration with the, with the uh, other uh, stakeholders, uh, the government is able to 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 manage. Uh, is actually put effort to be able to manage uh, the to, to, to bring to minimum uh, the issues of uh, 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 those, uh, those uh, um, and plant disease, I mean uh, insect um, diseases uh, which actually threaten our horticulture industry. Uh, thank you, Mr. Manene, uh, for your reflections on the topic of today. Uh, very, very informative, very insightful. And uh, you have given us what probably is being done by the government to ensure the safety of the people when it comes to uh, fruits and vegetables consumption in the country. Um, uh, I will now th thank you, uh, the two gentlemen and the lady for those uh, presentations. They really touched on the subject that we are dealing with today. Um, now I will open uh, the floor to the rest of the people in attendance. Now you have the Q&A uh, slot where you can put in your questions and then I will fill them to the panelists. Uh, you can as well uh, go to the uh, raise up your hands icon and then you click on it and then we will give you the, uh, uh, the opportunity to ask your question. But you have to be very brief. You only say your name your affiliation, and then you put your question very briefly. If you have to make a comment, <clears throat> it also has to be very brief because of uh, time. So that is where we are now. And I think there's already a question that I will field uh, to start us off in the plenary session now. And the question goes to uh, Susan uh, from Kenas. Susan, Mr. Nafis Bitange, uh, is asking, what is the role of Kenas in ensuring the cost of certification is sustainable, more especially as regards the smallholder farmers? And he's requesting you answer this in reference to KS1758 Horticulture 
record or practice. Over to you, Susan. Um, thank you, uh, <coughs> Mr. Vitange, for that question. Um, the control around the uh, monies that are charged for certification under uh, KS uh, 1758, the Horticulture Code of Practice, are twofold. One, that the certification scheme under which it drives the KS 1758 has provided for individual and group certification. So there's an opportunity for where, where you have small holder farmers that they come up together and, and uh, you know, while the management system in line with uh, fulfillment of the requirement of that standard will be looked at as one, uh, the inspections for the individual uh, holdings will still be done independently, but they can ride on the group certification. So that is one of them to try and bring the cost down. The second one where now we have a control over as accreditation bodies is during the assessments, when we do the carry out the assessment for the certification bodies, we require them to demonstrate how they work out their mandates uh, for the certification activity. And there is an international uh, document, mandatory document, which they need to be demonstrate compliance to. And any anybody, any certification body that certified uh, that's accredited under ISO IC 17065 has to demonstrate how it works out those uh, the mandates. So that is the other control we have. However, having said that, remember certification is a competitive area. We can only uh, pin them down on the mandates as, as worked out. What they charge per mandate is not within the control uh, of the accreditation body. So we try as much as possible to ensure that uh, they are able to demonstrate whether they work out, how they work out their mandates and, and they can justify to that. Thank you very much. Dr. Were, uh, there's a question for you. I never know, I submitted. Uh, there's a question for you from uh, Rasa Koke from Lagos, Nigeria. He's asking, how can we bridge the knowledge gap between the academy, a researchers, regulatory and compliance bodies, farmers and consumers, since it has been established that there is a disconnect among the various stakeholders in the food value chain. So that's a question for you, Dr. Were. Knowledge gap between various uh, actors. All right, uh, thank you. Thank you, Cheng, and thank you, Russ. Okay, indeed there is a, a knowledge gap and uh, you will find uh, quite a number of uh, research items maybe lying on the shelves of uh, universities or different research organizations uh, because they have not been communicated uh, to the relevant persons because research is not done just to benefit research researchers, but also to benefit uh, the consumers. One aspect uh, that we need to look at is partnering with the different and various uh, organizations in being able to disseminate this uh, information. One aspect uh, that currently is happening, as uh, you indicated well, that as uh, in your, uh, you indicated well in your comments, that these cuts across various uh, West Africa, East Africa, South Africa, all uh, these regions. Currently, an aspect that's being done in Kenya, there is a partnership between various organizations uh, with academia. Uh, one of the organization is, uh, we must congratulate CABI, uh, which is uh, taking a forefront in bringing together various teams. They brought together the academia, they brought uh, together accreditation companies and various other regulators in the industry to develop material that can be used to give information to the consumer and the producers as well. Because the information we may have in the knowledge we have created may not be palatable or may not be easily consumed by the persons we are targeting. Not everybody wants to read long theses or long papers, or long manuscripts, but they can be able to appreciate the information if this information is packaged in a way that they can understand. And that is one uh, aspect that uh, Kabi has uh, taken, that we are partnering them together with uh, uh, SOCA, uh, which is Society of uh, Crop Agribusiness Advisors, together with uh, Kenas, KEBS, uh, Ministry of Agriculture, KEFIS, and these bodies are coming up with a document that we can be able to pass 
to the farmer. It is a uh, money, um, sorry to preempt, but uh, uh, the driver of this, Dr. Bitange, will uh, uh, allow me just to be able to say that we are actually coming together to be able to bring out a document that can be passed to a farmer. A farmer can pick it up, read it, and know, all right, if I apply pesticides in a wrong way, it's going to affect myself if i'm not protected it's going to affect the produce such that someone consuming this can be uh, can have problems so that is the best uh, aspect to uh, pass the information coming together thank you, thank you dr with organizations <laughs> Uh, th thank you, thank you. Uh, this is another question for you, uh, which I would wish you to um, answer in under 30 seconds, if possible. What's the role of yes. the academia in food safety in Kenya, focusing on KS1758? Can this be embedded in the curriculum? Yes, uh, this can be embedded in the curriculum, uh, where the KS1758 is the horticulture standard. Um, uh, uh, code of practice, and this one can be embedded whereby when we are training uh, the agronomist to when you are training them, they come out having understood the KES 1758, and we are working together uh, with Kabi and other stakeholders to review curriculum and embed uh, these uh, standards in uh, KES 1758, which Thank has already you. been done in uh, agricultural TVETs as well. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Doctor, for taking those questions. Um, Susan, how devolved are services of Kenas? In under 30 seconds, could you please just give up your thoughts on that? Are, are they devolved? Kenas as an organization is not devolved. However, Kenas services are available across the country. We have trained assessors in various counties. We have experts uh, that we use where there is a competence gap amongst the assessment team across the county. We carry out assessor trainings even next next month. We will be carrying out assessor trainings in Kisumu, Mombasa, and I think Isiolo. And so we have assessors across to be able to provide services to our conformity assessment body. So th th do you. not feel shy to yeah. contact us. So. so the services are devolved. Thank you. Uh, There's a question to uh, Mr. Severino. Uh, uh, the question is, what measures is the government putting in place to ensure minimal chemical residues to horticultural products in local market? Uh, this is uh, Jonathan. He's an agricultural economist. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that question. Uh, let me say that uh, um, due to the uh, seriousness of uh, this issue of uh, pest residues, or the or the maybe the 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 negative effect, the government has put in place mechanism to ensure that the uh, these pesticide residues are uh, among and growers is it uh, maybe is reduced to a minimum. One of the ways there has been uh, some consultant effort through the government and its agencies to uh, carry out sensitization uh, meetings or public and basically sensitization messages to the farming community. And the sensitization basically it involves uh, awareness, creation of awareness about the use of, of the pest control products, that is the pesticides. And uh, uh, part, I mean, one of the message, I mean, the messages that is normally uh, is normally passed to the growers is actually a uh, use of a proper product for control of every in uh, any disease or pest. And uh, particularly, we normally insist uh, the government normally the, the trainers or the, uh, the, the farmers they insist on uh, use of proper products that is the uh, product which are ingested by pest control product bone. Then uh, linting or the report to ensure that the uh, the right dosage is actually applied uh, in, in the right I mean in the right dosage I mean with the right product with the right dosage. So those are the messages which are normally passed to the growers. And those sensitization okay. meetings have actually taken place in the form of training. The other, the other the other method which we have used uh, to sensitize uh, growers and also ensure uh, minimal uh, chemical residues in the in the, in the agriculture product is uh, we have also managed to train people that special a uh, kind of uh, uh, people that we call SSP that is a uh, uh, spray service providers. These are uh, identified uh, uh, maybe uh, youths in various uh, places, let's say farmer among the farmer groups or among growers who are trained specifically to be able to handle a uh, 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 product, and then they are used by the various growers uh, to spray for them in an, uh, in a more in an expertise. Thank you. That way, that yeah. way we are 
we are sure that the uh, chemicals are actually not uh, overused or even underused. That way now we are able to mean it. To thank, you. Th thank you, Mr. Severino. Um, there was, yeah, thank you, Mr. Severino. There was, um, uh, there is another question. Uh, uh, Mr. Dr. Wery, now that the food we buy in local markets is this unsafe, is there anything being done in the team with local actors to fix this gap? Oh, in yes, under 30 you. seconds, yeah. Yes, there is uh, work that's being done. There is a standard that has been implemented, and uh, we are working towards uh, getting farmers uh, to create awareness and getting farmers uh, certified against this code of practice to produce safe food. That is the KS 1758. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you so, so much, uh, Dr. Were. And uh, uh, there is one question to Mr. Severino, and I think this is the last question before we move to the closing uh, session. Uh, Mr. Severino, KS uh, 1758 is a major standard as regards the safety of fruits and vegetables. It is a mandatory standard. It, is it a mandatory standard? What steps has HCD taken to ensure that the standard is enforced? So the question is, is KS 1758 a mandatory standard? What are you doing to ensure it's uh, enforced? Please, in under 30 seconds, uh, Mr. Severino. Uh, K K S 1758 is basically, uh, they are just actually guidelines. Uh, they are actually guidelines to ensure that the, the, the standards on uh, growing or market, I mean, maybe growing, growing, processing, and the marketing of horticultural products uh, actually meet the international standards. So it is, it is not mandatory, but then uh, for anybody to access the international market, uh, uh, those basic guidelines have to be followed. Thank you. Not mandatory, but for you to access international markets, the guidelines have to be followed. If yeah, because you... it's a code of conduct, yes. Yeah, uh, thank you. I think we've got very few minutes to go, and then I'm moving to the closing uh, session. Somebody is requesting, I don't know how I can do this, Mr. Chiang, uh, please accept to link me up with Susan. I need her guidance to help in CIA. Uh, this, this is Morris. Okay, we will see how. Susan, do you have, you, you can see how to do that. You're <laughs> that, typing an answer, fine. okay. All right, thanks. That's You're typing an answer, please. Email. Yeah, please, please do so. Uh, we are coming to the tail end of it, and then I will ask the panelists on the way forward on this matter. And I'm giving you 20 seconds to respond. Dr. Wery, what, would you recommend to policymakers in respect to this uh, topic? In one sentence, please. Uh, working together as a consortium so that we don't uh, uh, work like in silos, but we need to put our hands together to be able to bring all these aspects uh, to bed. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Susan, in less than 10 seconds, please, what would you... Uh, <laughs> tell policymakers in respect to what we have discussed today? Um, just to state that uh, the code of practice uh, provides for a very good platform on which we can uh, demonstrate that our food is safe. And uh, I request that uh, uh, the conformity assessment bodies at the inspection, certification, and testing bodies yeah. Thank you. Uh, are yeah. mandated accreditation for that. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Severino, less than five seconds, please. Uh, mine on policy makers, I think uh, the, the, the major issue um, is actually bringing together partner, various partners in, in, the, in, the, in the... Thank you. Right? Thank you, Mr. Severino. <laughs> uh, um, um, ladies and gentlemen, we are coming to the end of this, and uh, I will give the chance now to Monica. Uh, Monica... Uh, just introduce yourself briefly and uh, give your remarks, closing remarks for today. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Ocheng. Uh, I think me, I'll need more than 20 seconds. I'll need two minutes. Uh, Davis, are you able to unmute my camera? It's good for the audience to connect with the speaker. 
Uh, first of all, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I wish to thank you all for participating in this discussion. I know the time has been quite uh, limited, but we've got very interesting insights from the panelists. We thank them too as well for giving the expert opinions about the issues of pesticide use in Kenya, Kenya's fruits and vegetables, and also pointing to us key recommendations to enable a joint effort to address the underlying causes in order to safeguard consumers' interests. Uh, the industry actors, the academia, health practitioners, extension providers in agriculture and the environment, and the general public, all, all of us have a role to play in addressing the dismal factor issue. And I think it's one of the issues I was hearing as the last comments from the panelists, everybody talking about joint effort, collaboration, and working together. Uh, CABI's uh, PlantWise Plus program aims, among other things, to work with partners towards pesticide risk reduction while enabling the supply of supply and demand for safer, higher quality food of locally produced uh, food for our domestic markets. One of the panelists mentioned about regulation, but regulation for external markets, and we are looking at how do we make this regulation work for our local markets as well. And of course, this can be achieved through joint efforts, plus enabling environment and also other activities that include awareness that has been talked about, and also influencing behaviors to enable production of, and supply of safer food. This conversation today has generated several recommendations on mitigating pesticide risk in fresh fruit and vegetable markets, which we will be further deliberated upon by Kabi and partners and action plans developed. And of course, when time comes, we may call upon each, each one of us to be part of this uh, effort. Uh, to be able to fight against a great range of pests and diseases that damage different crops, we need to have a wide portfolio of low-risk uh, crop protection products. One of the panelists mentioned that. And one of the initiatives through CABI's work on bioprotection portal, we are working with industry actors to enable access to low-risk plant protection products. We also know that a crucial element will be engaging with policy. Uh, I think that's why Ocheng ended by asking, what is the policy recommendation? And informing the general public about the safe food production and distribution. This will help to increase the market demand for food produced more sustainably and ultimately driving up the speed of adoption of biological products. So we appreciate you uh, joining us uh, in this discussion that will help us change crop production to help it grow safer food, higher quality food, and grow it more sustainably. Thank you very much. And uh, looking forward to more collaborative efforts and linking up also to work with the projects or programs that you're working with. Good evening. Uh, thank you, Monica. Uh, we, we appreciate that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have to go. It's so interesting, and we could be here for a whole day or probably until tomorrow, but uh, time can't allow us to do that. So I want to thank the panelists, uh, uh, Susan Munirio Chieng, Dr. Samuel Were, and Severino Manene, so, so much for taking your time uh, to share with us your thoughts on uh, food safety in Kenya, especially on fruits and vegetables. I want to thank those who are in attendance uh, for taking their time to tune in and listen to the conversation, as well as to post questions and even make comments. Uh, we really appreciate you. Uh, we hope that this conversation will go on and uh, help people make better choices in life, especially when it comes to consumption of fruits and vegetables and also preparation of those ones so that they can be very safe. So I want to thank you so, so much. We really appreciate you. And this marks the end of the today's event. Until next time, goodbye, Kwaheri. <laughs>